today. My name is Jesse, and today we're going to be going over the top enhancements for 2017, at least some of my favorite enhancements for this year's release. We had a lot of fun doing the rollout events this year, and I think there's some really cool enhancements for 2017, so we'll get right into it without too much delay. Our agenda for today, we're just going to be going kind of in standard order this year. I'll go through some of the interface, then we'll go into sketching, parts and features, assemblies, and then into drawings. Uh, I'll try not to go into the other products too much, even though I would love to. Um, we'll spend about uh, 20, 30 minutes today kind of going over some of the core SOLIDWORKS enhancements, and we'll just kind of go right through in order. Now, when it comes to the interface for 2017, we have some pretty cool enhancements that I think uh, really, really add a lot to the experience of working with SOLIDWORKS. Uh, breadcrumbs was introduced last year, and uh, I've I mentioned breadcrumbs all the time. I, I absolutely love these things, and there was a couple things that I really wish they had added for 2016 when they came in initially, and they've added those things for 2017, so that's perfect. I've really enjoyed those changes. Uh, we've got some, some shortcuts just in terms of getting things filtered out uh, quickly for you and uh, and bring things to you uh, when you need them and getting them out of the way when you don't. That's one of the focuses that SolidWorks has been working on for the past couple of years is just uh, reducing your amount of travel, reducing the amount of effort that it takes to get uh, what you need to you and get the stuff that you don't need just out of your way and, and let you work on what it is you need to get to. So let's take a look at the first enhancement here with the breadcrumb improvements. Now, as I mentioned, breadcrumbs came in in 2016, and here we'll see some additions to the breadcrumbs, which I think are really nice little changes. So if we make some selections here in terms of picking things out, I use these the most in assemblies. It's not just useful for assemblies, but here we can see that we'll have access now to our standard planes, so we can get access to those quick. I have my tree hidden a lot of the times. Uh, mates that are failed, we see them showing up as failed mates, so we can very quickly identify them, and we can even fix them right Right from the breadcrumbs as well so there's really no additional travel when we're troubleshooting things or getting in and out of those situations you can really use the breadcrumbs to uh, rely on those breadcrumbs I guess more so than you could even in 2016 uh, I have on my space mouse I have that set the breadcrumbs on the D key uh, to be one of my shortcuts but of course if you're just using your regular keyboard you can hit the D key and those mouse uh, those mouse controls in the form of breadcrumbs will come right to you so you can get all sorts of cool tree selection capabilities <clears throat> and those will come right to you rather than having to go back and forth and back and forth across your interface. We now have a quicker shortcut for hide all types, so you'll be able to uh, poke the eye out, I guess you could say, on the top of your heads up display. So if you select right on the cursor itself, that will hide all types. I actually have this as a shortcut in my mouse gestures, so I have one swipe one way, it will hide my tree, swipe the other direction will uh, will hide all types, so I can get you know planes and sketches and things out of my way or back to me uh, quickly. But again, if you're not using those types of shortcuts, you can use your heads up display for this kind of functionality now, where you can just click everything on, click everything off, and it will leave you with the list of what you have turned on and off. So again, just kind of letting you customize what you want to see and when you want to see it. We now have the capability to sort the configuration order with ease in 2017. And what that looks like is we now have the ability to use either a sort type. So if you right click on your uh, tree in your configurations you can see you can sort by uh, numeric or you have um, some different options in there that you can adjust for you can also choose manual and this will allow you to slide things around and control manually the order of your configurations now this is nice when you're working in assemblies you can come along in here and you'll see that that order is carried over into uh, your assemblies or wherever you're reusing those so you can make those selections much quicker so if there's a common uh, a common size that you're always using all the time just drag it right to the top and you don't have to go scrolling through the, those lists of configurations to try to get down to uh, what you're looking for put it where you want it and then you can just grab it quickly without having to do too much searching Likewise, with the tree display, we have some options for this as well when it comes to assemblies. And here we'll see that if we uh, adjust the tree view, we always have all of these uh, configurations. We've got display states always showing. 
Well, we can reduce this down to only show when it's applicable. So if it only has one, it will remove all of that information, which really cleans up the tree quite a bit. Uh, when we only have one configuration or display state, it's really irrelevant information anyway. So we can now do that. We can also sort instances together now, and you'll see that that will sort of work like a folder structure. So you can sort those together, and you'll find those will just kind of group together in, in a, a folder-like uh, icon there. Even though they're not a subassembly or in a folder, it will just kind of quick shortcut to that. So quick ways to clean up the tree a little bit, sometimes with more complex assemblies. And you can see in this case, even not a complex assembly, but still uh, cleans up the tree quite a bit. We also have another option for uh, components in section view as well this year. And we'll have now the ability to uh, set those to transparent. So you'll see that we can kind of uh, ghost those components out or choose what components we want to be ghosted out. Rather than including or excluding altogether, we can say have this one be transparent on the opposite side of the section, and you'll see those will stick in there. This gives us a little better idea of where some of those components are in reference to other components. You can see much better the context of what's going on with that assembly with some of the larger components ghosted in, and it gives you a better feel of what's happening there rather than just kind of losing all of that detail altogether and losing reference of where you are in the, the overall assembly. So some somewhat minor tweaks to the interface this year, but things that I've already uh, come to find very handy. Let's move into some of the sketching enhancements for 2017. And there's a couple of things that they've done that feels like a subtle change until you start playing with it. And then you really find, at least I did, you really find that it makes such a huge difference. And the two of these kind of work together. So for 2017, we have shaded contours and the ability to alt select those contours to pre-select them. So let's see how this works. When creating sketches in SOLIDWORKS, at least with complex sketches, uh, sometimes we have to move those around as a group of components. And that's always been a very clumsy thing to get done uh, because of the potential relations or lack thereof between the components. You would always kind of have to fully define things and then move things around as a group of components or try to go into move entities and get them moved around. Well, in 2017, we don't really have to worry about that anymore uh, because SOLIDWORKS will notify us once we have a closed contour. So if we make a, ske a sketch here, just a simple little shape. You'll see as soon as I close off that sketch, it becomes shaded, indicating that that is a closed region. And you can see I can select anywhere from within that region and start manipulating that. Now, if we have multiple contours here, I'll create another closed contour from within that contour. We can also control and select those. So I'll grab both of them. Now you'll see they'll all move as one full piece. So we get the benefits of working with a block, but we still have the flexibility of adding in our own relations and getting things set the way that they need to be. So sort of the best of both worlds here. Now, if we use the Alt key and select one of these profiles, you'll see that it will highlight just like the contour selection, and I can skip right into the extrude tool or whatever we need to use. Now, those tools are adjustable, so we can we can modify that toolbar and add in whatever we'd like to to get to. I added in the flyout menu that gets me access to you know all of the features, but you could add just extrude and extrude cut or whatever you wanted to add in there, uh, customize that menu to what you use on a regular basis alt select which will pick up those uh, contours and it will allow you to skip right into the feature tool so another nice shortcut I use this all the time um, and especially nice where you're getting that shaded preview for the closed contour it gives you a visual indication that you do have a closed contour so in cases where you think you have a closed contour and you exit the sketch and create a feature only to find out that you have a small gap in there or something like that, that whole process will be alleviated. As soon as you see that go shaded, you know you have a closed contour and you're, you're good to go with that. So combine that with the ability to move it around and a quick pre-select it, excellent addition for 2017. And this is one that I've been using on, on almost every sketch that I've been creating. Um, since I loaded beta on. Uh, I think this is definitely a, it feels like a small change until you start using it and you realize how huge it is. Moving into parts and features here, I have a handful of options that they've added for 2017 that I want to cover here. Some nice changes to sweep in terms of making that a little bit easier. Uh, last year in 2016, we got some cool additions to sweep that will allow us to um, to add in, you know, just a, a circular profile right directly from the sweep tool and the bi-directional sweep options and things like that. Uh, they've added in some more controls for sweep this year, which will make things a bit easier. The chamfer tool actually 
actually got a, a remake this year, which is seems like a funny thing to get a remake because it was one of the you know earliest tools uh, from within SolidWorks, but that got a remake this year with some cool new options. Uh, they've added in a new tool for creating multi-step holes, which will really speed things up uh, in terms of creating that type of geometry, especially if you're creating that in multiples. And the wrap tool got a cool addition. We'll take a look at the sweep here first. Now the sweep got some pretty cool changes in that uh, it's expanded its capabilities in selection in terms of what you can actually use to create a sweep. If we look at a case here where the thread tool is being created, we need to create the runoff for this thread. Now you'll see what happens here is all we have to do is select the end face that we're using and if that is uh, perpendicular and coincident to our sketch we don't have to jump through any other hoops to create another sketch we don't have to select that face uh, and create a you know a convert entities or anything like that we just are able to directly select that face now we can also use the selection manager and pick up specific edges so we can grab edges off of the model in this case it was easier to just use the face itself so again we come right along in here I'll replay this select that face we have a sketch set right here which is just right to the edge and immediately sweeps that right in so just like the loft tools where you can loft from face to face now the sweep now has that capabilities as well so it just kind of opens up things to how how you might have expected it to work in the first place and now really has um, has increased the power of that while we're here talking about the thread tool, the thread tool did get some enhancements this year as well. Uh, just as a side note, we're able to trim to faces uh, so that we'll kind of clean up the tops and the bottoms of those threads. We can also add multi starts. So if you had uh, several thread pieces, you know, several helical thread pieces uh, that you would have needed to create multiple thread features, you can now do that in a single thread feature and add them all in at once. In fact, this one was created that way. Let's take a look at the enhancements to the chamfer this year. Now, again, there was three different things that they added to the chamfer this year. One of them was a multi-distance chamfer. Now, we've been able to do this with the fillet for quite some time, and now we can do this with chamfer. So if we have chamfers of multiple size, we can add these all in one single feature and we don't have to worry about uh, coming in making multiple features in our tree we can directly edit those just like we would with the fillet feature and have that all be one single feature in the tree so cleans that process up a little bit and again cleans up our our tree a little bit in that we don't have multiple features to do uh, the work that one feature should be capable of uh, creating. Now we've also really expanded the capabilities when it comes to the uh, the way that we create chamfers, um, and that is you'll see the chamfers are or have the option to be created much more like a fillet would be created in the past, and that actually leads us to uh, the last capabilities, which we'll show here in a minute. Now here we'll take a look at adding a chamfer in as a hold line uh, rather than just directly onto an edge. And this allows us to get more unique geometry that you'd have to create with a sweep or something like that before uh, we can create shapes with variable uh, chamfers on them by simply just uh, creating those edges that the chamfer can follow and letting the chamfer reference uh, that geometry. So let's take a look at how this works here. If we launch ourselves into the chamfer tool, again, you'll see some new options in here. Now from here, we'll select the face chamfer again, sort of like a face fillet, and we can select those faces that we want to chamfer between. Here I'll select a hold line, and you can see all we have to do is select the edges that are referencing that, and from there we get that nice, smooth, continuous variable fillet. You'll see we uh, have now also gotten the capability to toggle this from a chamfer over into a fillet and vice versa. Now, one word of caution when you're creating these, the transfer back and forth, the chamfer will have to be created using one of the new styles of the chamfer tool uh, because that's kind of using that same technology in the background that the fillet is. But if you're creating those chamfers from now forward, you'll be able to go back and forth between a fillet and a chamfer and not have to restart that process, which is really nice because sometimes you have downstream features that are referencing these types of features. You know, it's always recommended to leave these types of things towards the end, but in the case of, you know, this variable fillet here, this is something that might be uh, critical to the, the shape of the geometry, not just a cosmetic thing that will be added in the end. So you'll be able to uh, transfer back and forth with, with much more reliability in 2017 when it comes to moving between hard breaks and soft breaks. 
Now the next tool that we have here is the multi-step hole. And in this case, you'll see we have some multi-step holes already applied here. We'll section this so we can see kind of what we're doing here. And this multi-step hole is a nice way to be able to, uh, to create and store this type of information. So you'll see from the tree there, we can actually assign what's happening on the, uh, the, the near side as well as the far side of the hole. Now, again, this would have to be done with something like a revolve or multiple holes uh, in the past. And with this new tool, we'll be able to assign both sides of the hole by basically telling the hole where it's going from and where, where it's coming from and where it's going to. All right, now we can assign this custom geometry and set its sizing any way that we, we like or whatever we need from it. And we can then adjust <clears throat> and store that information. So if we need to come back and reuse this, we can save this as one of our favorites and we can slide this in wherever we need it to be. Um, really speeding up the process for creating this complex geometry. The wrap tool has got some pretty cool enhancements this year, and that has expanded its capabilities out from only applying to uh, cylindrical or conical faces. You can see here, this is kind of a strange, unique shape uh, around the forearm cuff of the Myomo unit, and we'd like to put the logo wrapped onto this face. Now, I've made a couple tech tips regarding this, uh, different processes, and you can see here that the wrap now will accommodate for spline surfaces. All of the options are still there for embossed, deboss or scribe, but we can now choose multiple surfaces across more complex shapes. All right, so this takes the sketch around the center point of the sketch, and it will actually wrap that around complex geometry. Now moving into assemblies, so let's take a look at some of these options here. Mates are now based closer on the selection, so you should see more predictable movement when mating components together. We'll take a look at that. Magnetic mates have been introduced. This is a cool enhancement to speed pack. We have mate controller enhancements, which was one of my favorite assembly additions for last year. And we also have 3D interconnect, which is an awesome new piece of technology that we'll take a look at as well. Let's take a look at how the mates based on selection works. Now this is a change that you won't even really see happen. When we're adding a mate in, you'll find that the mates will much more predictably land where you would expect. Now you can see in that case, the components were backwards, but based on where my selection was, they actually flipped themselves over and landed in the proper spot. On larger assemblies, they've made a change to speed pack, which enables us to actually snap things together, sort of like how mate references would work for a single component. Now, in the example that we have here, you'll see that we have a conveyor belt line where we need to interchangeably add and remove these components. As you can see, I can drag these subassemblies around, again using speed pack in the background, and they will actually snap to each other. Again, they have that mate reference type of behavior, which will link these together. They have some idea of where they're going, and they're actively looking to find themselves in the right spot. The mate controller is a tool that they added in last year, which allows us to store positions and control which mates are actually controlling the motion on complex assemblies. Now I've used this in simple scenarios quite successfully as well, but it was certainly designed to simplify more complex motion and it does that very well. Now this year they've added the ability for us to save configurations directly out of the mate controller. So let's take a look at how that works. Here I'll open up the mate controller and from within here you can see I have several stored positions. Directly next to that, we have a new button for add configuration. As soon as we select that button, that has created a configuration for us using these values set for those particular mates. Now, if we take a look at the configurations, you can see these new configurations listed. We can activate them, which will set those values. And we can apply this even in things like drawings. Here we can switch configurations, and now we can use and reference that information that we so easily created using the Make Controller elsewhere in SolidWorks. Now 3D Interconnect is a new piece of technology that we got for this year as well. And this is probably one of the coolest additions that they've made to SolidWorks 2017. What this tool allows us to do is to bring native third-party design data into SOLIDWORKS without having to translate that information. So what that means is that we can bring in files from other CAD softwares without having to import those files into SOLIDWORKS, which means that we don't have to wait for the translation process. 
we can use information from 3D tools that you might have used in the past. And we can also work directly with supplier and vendor CAD data without having to worry about that translation issues or the upkeep and updating capabilities or lack thereof of imported geometry. Now, the best part about this tool is that it knows what type of geometry it's bringing in. And those face and edge IDs are preserved when you open those files into SolidWorks. Now, some files like SolidWorks, we just overwrite the files. You have a PDM system that manages that. Uh, products from PTC, you'll see those actually version as they save. So you see a dot one, dot two, or something like that. 3D Interconnect is capable of tracking that information. And when it sees a file has been overwritten or there's a new version file in that same folder, it will actually flag you and say, hey, you've got a new version of this file. Do you want to use this? You can right click, say update file, and you can be on your way. This is beautiful for cases where you have uh, some design intent, some in context features in the context of an assembly, or you're working with uh, CAM data within SOLIDWORKS and you have a new version of a, a part come along or the vendor just simply sent you the wrong version. You get halfway down the path of working with that and then find out you have the wrong version of the file. A simple update in any of those cases will allow you to reuse the work that you've done and not have to worry about bringing in a totally new imported file and having to redo that work. Now this works with a bunch of different CAD packages, uh, PTC, Inventor, Solid Edge, Siemens. The only caveat in this process is that a CATIA file will require SOLIDWORKS Premium to have the CATIA translator involved. So the CATIA translator is now in SOLIDWORKS Premium, but you will need SOLIDWORKS Premium if you're working with CATIA files. Uh, other types of files, you won't need Premium in order to do that. All right, now again, this allows us to bring in files that we would normally try to avoid working with you know, directly into an assembly. We can mate and design just like they were SOLIDWORKS components. We can open up those components and work with them, uh, adding in our own features. And worst case scenario, we can even just break the link all together and say, we want to customize this part to our own needs and use this essentially as an imported part. You'll see these files coming in a lot cleaner than a regular import would. The translators are all new and they're built and maintained uh, by Dassault. So uh, much better quality when bringing things in in 2017. Moving along to drawings, we have a handful of things that we'll talk about here. Let's take a look at mirroring a view here first. Mirroring a view is a simple process. All we have to do is select a checkbox in order to do this. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to go in and actually make a mirrored part. So all we have to do is select the view now, check on mirrored view, and you'll see that will create the opposite hand version of that view. If you're just looking for a quick print out the door of the opposite view of something, you can now just toggle that on for the view. You don't have to worry about making the mirrored solid and then putting it in the drawing. You can create a drawing, flip the view and be on your way. We have the ability now to propagate sheet properties across specific sheets. So we'll see that if we adjust for a property, I'll right click on one of my sheets, go to properties. If we make a change here, so say a sheet size, we can now select which sheets we'd like to modify. So I've selected a handful, say okay, apply, and now those specific sheets will all get the same changes all at once. I don't have to go into each sheet, make that same change each time. I can say these sheets all get this same information and allow that to sweep across and make those changes to each sheet. So a nice little bit of efficiency when working with multi-sheet drawings. Now in the past handful of years, we've gotten some capabilities for linking things together or smart tags that will update based on what you have them linked to. And this year we got a nice little addition for notes to be able to link directly to cells in a table. And now this <clears throat> is a nice option for things like having the bill of material show where you may want to call this out with some custom tag. Again, all we have to do is select the option to add in a tag and select the cells that we would like to have reference. You can see you can reference multiple cells. And if we were to come back in here and change something, you'll see that those changes will be propagated out to the call out itself. So you can have everything consistent. You don't have to worry about updating that down the road. Should something change, that information is set to remain consistent because it is linked. Now my last topic with MBD isn't quite related to drawings, but it's in the same vein, so I'll stick this in here. We've got some really nice enhancements for MBD, Dim Expert, and the Template Editor. But one of the coolest things I think about this tool is we now have the 
support of step files. And what this means is that we can now start translating data across neutral formats and get that information to anyone who needs it, regardless of their system. Now, paperless drawings has been a thing that's been slowly kind of sneaking its way in. And I think this year, in my mind, it's finally got to a point where it's become more useful than a drawing. It has more capabilities. It's easier to read. It's as universal as a drawing can be. And to me, those are all the things that needed to happen in order to make this technology really work. We'll see we have the capabilities of attaching a step 242 file. That is the format, the new format of the step file that will allow for translation of the manufacturing information. We have the ability to send this out and publish this into a 3D PDF. Now, what you'll notice here is that the 3D PDF can now include other bits of reference, the step file itself, views from SolidWorks with all their dimensions. We can include sketches as reference now. So this really allows us to send one package, this one PDF file. And within this one PDF file contains all of the information that the manufacturer would need to know in order to produce this part. They could rotate things around. There's no ambiguity in 2D drawing views. They can get right in there and see exactly what dimensions apply to what. If they select the dimension, they can see that this dimension is referencing this edge or this face. They get the step file that they can directly open as a 3D file, manipulate that, look at that, and again, has all of the PMI information. They have other documents that they might need or that you might need to send them, approval forms or things like that in the form of separate file formats, Word files, or whatever those happen to be. So all of the information that they would need is rolled into one single file, and again, has more information than they would get from just a 2D drawing or you know a package of information that you would be sending them now. So I just wanted to bring that up in the drawing section because I think that is such a cool capability to have. Okay, so that was a whirlwind tour of SolidWorks 2017 and some of the enhancements that I thought were really cool for this year's release. If you have any questions and you haven't typed them in in the box already, go ahead and put those in the questions section and I will be on here to answer those. If not, thanks for watching. If you have any other questions after the fact, feel free to contact us at CAD Dimensions through any one of our offices and have a great day. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.